This is the Marine Recruit Depot, San Diego, California. It's a very special day. Today, these young men take pride in becoming Marines, but that isn't all these particular young men are proud of. They are all Navajo Indians. And on this day, buses brought scores of their family and friends hundreds of miles from the Navajo Nation in the Southwest to watch the ceremony, a ceremony that some of them attended 40 years earlier to the day. I felt like joining the Marine Corps you know. <laughs> My kids come down here, see these boys over here, great. That's good. These men in the stands are the fathers and uncles of the young men in the parade, and they are probably the least heralded heroes of the Second World War. These unknown warriors are the Navajo Code Talkers. When World War II broke out in the Pacific, the Japanese armies were at first surprisingly successful. They took Wake Island, Guam, Guadalcanal, the Marshall Islands, the Philippines. One of the reasons the Japanese were so successful was because they had broken all the American peacetime codes and subsequently all our military codes. No one in the Pentagon knew how to prevent this, but one man, Philip Johnston, a technical sergeant in the Marines, whose father was a missionary in the Navajo Nation, had an idea. Since Navajo was an unwritten and unknown language, he suggested that Navajo Marines be entrusted with the responsibility of transmitting the military's top battle plans. 400 Navajo Marines volunteered for that mission. Their assignment was so secret, knowledge of what they contributed was not even made generally public 30 years after the war's end. Because of the secrets the code talkers had to transmit, they were the first to hit the beach and the last to leave. And sometimes, they never left. The Japanese, they never broke the Navajo code. Some of our subordinates were told that if ever a uh, code talker was going to be captured or that they, they had orders to shoot the code talkers. Ironically, the Navajo code talkers were risking their lives in battle in the Pacific, speaking a language they were forbidden to speak in parts of their own country. We were forbidden to speak the Navajo language. As a matter of fact, I was uh, punished quite often by uh, these None. Their mission was also so secret, they were not allowed to communicate for months at a time with their own families, who didn't know if their fathers and sons were living or dead. We had no idea what the little man was doing. <laughs> and uh, that seemed to last forever for me. The United States Marines have recognized the enormous sacrifice and contribution made by the Navajo Code Talkers, but the United States government has yet to give any kind of official commendation. Some of their Navajo brothers questioned the sacrifices made by the Code Talkers. They wondered why these men would give their lives for a country whose government broke nearly every single treaty it made with the Indian. In spite of that, though, these Navajos are still giving to this country, and now they are giving their sons. Discipline and spirit are the hallmark of a Marine. And these qualities are the goals of your training here. We will give every effort to train you, even after some of you have given up on yourselves. I visited with these young recruits the day before the parade and found out they now speak three languages, Navajo, English, and Marine. Michael, how old are you? Sir, the private is 19 years old. Michael, call me John. Don't call me sir, please. Yes, sir. Did you experience any kind of prejudice as a youngster because you're Navajo? There was some people that just couldn't relate to Native Americans. And um, I don't know why, I guess, I guess it's the way they were raised. They just couldn't get along with Indians. Michael told me there was also a little reverse prejudice. There were some Navajos back in, around in my hometown where they thought I was foolish for joining the Marines. And what did you tell them? I told him, you live your life and I'll live mine. Why did you join the Marines? My father was in the Marines. What was he? He was a uh, Navajo code talker in World War II. Uh, my grandfather was a code talker in the Marines. In my family, there was only one code talker, that's my uncle. I kind of feel that we were left out in most of the things, but it is our country, so we should defend it. Sergeant Clark, if you had been an Indian, how would you feel if you were called to defend this country? I think I'd have to do a lot of thinking about it. 
I really admire these young men that have come out here to uh, go through recruit training now. As their history goes, even these Navajos, they wanted to come into Marine Corps before we even asked them to come into Marine Corps. They were at the recruiting stations wanting to sign up before, at Pearl Harbor Day, December 7th, they went to the recruiting stations to sign up with their own weapons and horses and stuff. Most of them couldn't even speak English and they wanted to sign up. It's really hard. The way I look at it here, I don't think I want to see my son do all these things. You know, I think every mother feels exactly the same way you do. I don't think so, not me anyway. <laughs> You're a doll. Thank you. I love this country. We're proud to be, to complete boot camp and be Marines. That's what I always wanted, be a Marine. When will you be a Marine, Ben? In 18 hours, we'll be full-fledged Marines. It's going to be a good feeling, deep down. That's great. And so, 40 years and 18 hours after their fathers and uncles and grandfathers had stepped forward to serve their country, a new generation of American Navajo warriors dons the uniform of the United States Marines. If the fact these old warriors have never received a congressional or presidential citation or commendation bothers them, you'd never know it. As in wartime, they're silent. They know what they've done, their sons know, and now we know.